All right. Father, we come first of all just to give you thanks for who you are. Oh my goodness, your loving kindness toward us. You are uh, just your, 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 your passion for us, that we be all that you um, hoped and created us to be, Lord. I just thank you. I thank you that in the midst of us trying to figure it out, you still love us. You still pour out your love and your spirit upon us. You still give us the power and authority to move on your behalf in this earth, Lord, to cultivate love, to cultivate um, loving kindness, to cultivate empathy and compassion, Lord, and to uh, offer up strength to build your kingdom, Lord, to um, allow love to just reign. And so I just thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be able to do that through this platform. I thank you, Father, for uh, my brother, Lord, who is out here doing his thing, Lord, the thing that you have created him to do. Uh, and in the midst of his him moving um, in his purpose, Lord, you are shining a light on him, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah, like literally shining the light on him, Lord, while he is doing um, movies and commercials and um, just being in that spotlight, Lord, for you, Lord. So I thank you that as you shape and mold him, Lord, into um, that person, um, that super duper gorgeous uh, creation that you have put together, Lord, that he stays encouraged, Lord, and that this conversation will encourage other individuals to do the same, to keep moving in the midst of um, hardship, in the midst of hurt, in the midst of pain, in the midst of emotional and mental um, um, weight, Lord, that we will continue to move, continue to push, continue to be a light a beacon of light shining on your behalf. Again, I just thank you and I bless you. Speak as only you can, Lord, uh, that we may reach those individuals that you have set forth. In Jesus' name, again, I just say thank you. Amen. 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 All righty. Oh, my goodness. I am super duper excited about this conversation. Ah, uh, um, Wow, it is definitely needed. Um, we, as people, sometimes go about trying to uh, just push through, right? And not deal with the inner stuff that's going on. Um, that, whether it's emotionally, mentally, physically, um, through our hurt, through our trauma, um, and yes, it's good to keep pushing through, but we don't always stop to acknowledge that there is um, an issue there or that attention needs to take hold of it and bring forth a healing. So I am grateful that my guest today um, is gonna help me have this conversation and that it is a male having this conversation because oftentimes um, we find that males are quiet. Uh, they like to be um, strong. And I think that the perception is that they're supposed to be strong and they're not supposed to have uh, any cracks or weakness within their frame and um, supposed to, you know, handle it all and carry this huge burden. But it's time to have a conversation. It's time to have a conversation about um, our emotional health, that, that mental uh, portion that needs attention as well. And to know that we all are humans. They are humans. They are not Superman. And um, it is important that 
we stop to uh, have conversations with them and, and be mindful that they are people. So I am going to welcome to the stage. I always love uh, back in the day, Deaf Comedy Jam, how uh, <laughs> Martin Lawrence used to bring the guests out. He'd be like, come into the stage. <laughs> So I think it's befitting that I uh, bring you out like that. Yes, 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 y'all. Y'all go enjoy this man uh, doing his thing out here in the world in many ways, not just the acting, but oh my gosh, an amazing uh, producer, uh, director, writer. Uh, he's a Marine, y'all. Oh my gosh. And just um, oh, let's add father uh, to that to that list as well. But he is doing his thing in the earth, cultivating love, cultivating um, just joy, and I I love it. So, welcome to the stage, y'all, Mr. Rolfini Whippy. <laughs> so much for having me. I appreciate that. I love it. Oh my gosh. The conversations that we have had um, on the sideline, um, oh my gosh, they just range from what? Football, the Steelers, uh, sports, uh, trading cards, oh my gosh, to emotional health, to mental health, to um, children. I mean, the, the range is there. Um, so I am, I'm thankful for that because I believe all of that is going to create this amazing conversation uh, that is purposed for this time, not just this time with you and I, but this moment in time um, concerning the world and concerning how we see one another and not just see one another, but how we approach one another as well, uh, especially as I mentioned before, uh, males. So the first question I'm gonna ask you is, who are you? <laughs> That's a good way to start. Uh, my name is Rofini Whitby. I'm a uh, originally from Norfolk, Virginia, and uh, was uh, raised uh, by a, uh, my mother, single mother, uh, was my sister and I. Uh, she's 10 years my senior. So uh, we, she and I spent a lot of time together. Uh, so I, I do, you know, understand civil and rivalries, you know, at, at some times. And it, it was crazy because I, I didn't even know what a fight was. When, I, when my sister was there, you know, it's like no one's gonna mess with her little brother. You know? So now she's she's about what, five, 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 six? She'll, she'll kill me for that. And I'm six, four. So anytime, you know, I, I see her and everything, or I, someone introduces, or she introduces me to someone, you know, I call her my little sister. And, you know, of course she's like, well, I'm older. I'm like, yeah, but you're shorter too. So, um, like you said, uh, I, two weeks out of high school, I was actually supposed to go to college, uh, uh, track and basketball scholarship, uh, I got hurt. So that didn't really pan out. So I decided to go into the Marine Corps, uh, two weeks out of high school. And uh, I got a chance to see the world. And, and, and that's amazing because uh, growing up in uh, Park Place, in Norfolk, Virginia, I never thought that I would probably, you know, get a chance to see some of the things that I, I, I saw while serving in the Marine Corps. That's awesome. That, so was that something you always wanted to do? I mean, was that in you to go to the military? How did that come about? Well, my, uh, my father, my stepfather, they were both in the Navy uh, and um, being, being, you know, a child of a single parent, my mother worked really hard. So uh, it goes without saying, we didn't really have a lot of money. 
So when I was in high school, I saw uh, NJROTC and it's like, well, hey, you know, they're going to give us, you know, uniforms to wear. So I'm like, well, at least two or three days a week, I don't have to worry about what I'm going to wear. It's already decided for me. And uh, I got into it. I liked it. I stayed in it uh, my entire time in high school. So I was a four year cadet. And so it was an easy transition mm-hmm. from high school to uh, to the to the Marines, and I, you know, I, I joke with people when I tell them. I said, you know, my mom, she was very she was very vocal, very strong, uh, uh, black woman, and I was like, if I can if I can live with my mom for 17, 18 years, I can definitely handle anything the Marine Corps has to throw at me. So, uh, so I never really thought about it, but. You know, I, I wanted to do something. And if you weren't going to college, you know, I, I just didn't want to get a job and, and stay in Norfolk. So I was like, what can I do that's going to be like, wow, you know, people are going to be like, oh my God, you're doing that? Mm-hmm. And so uh, I was like, okay, so the Marines, they seemed like the right thing to do. And everyone, you know, respected Marines, thought they were crazy, but they still respected them. So I wanted that, that, that wow moment. So it's like, well, I'm going to Norfolk State University. I'm going to Hampton. It's like, I'm going to the Marines. They're like, no, you're not. I'm like, yeah, I am. <laughs> so, best decision I ever made. Uh, I definitely believe so. Amen. So how long did you stay? I did nine years started? broken. I did nine years broken. Uh, so I, I did my, my, my original four years and I got out. I did my... Uh, inactive reserve time in uh, Iwakuni, Japan. And then I, I came to this area, the Washington DC metro area. And uh, I missed it, you know, was always on base around military. So I went back in and in that short period of time, you know, the Marine Corps, it changed a great deal. Mm. And I was like, well, this isn't really the Marine Corps that I remember, but I, I guess the people who were there when I first went in, said the same thing. Mm-hmm. So every, everything is transitioning. And uh, so, you know, I was given the opportunity to get back out. And so I did, but I've, uh, I've since high school, I've always been around the military uh, mm-hmm. in some way, form or fashion. Uh, uh, I'd like to say that I'm, I've just hit my 34th year of federal service. So- awesome. With, with God's blessings, I'll retire in 2024. And uh, hopefully I can dedicate more time to doing things that I truly want to do, more passions. Amen. I love that. Okay, so before we get to your passion, um, would you recommend the military, whether it be Marines or not, to um, <laughs> Wow. High schoolers or anyone else? <sighs> Times have changed. Uh, I, I felt that the military was a good thing for me uh, because it, it, it gave me, it, it taught me a trade. It gave me a job. It gave me a career. And, and what a lot of people don't understand is you can have a, you can have a job, but do you have a career? Mm. You can, you can work a job, you know, five, 10 years and walk away and have nothing to show for it. But a career is something that you start and you hope that 20, 30 years later, you get a retirement, you get a pension, you, 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 you've done something. And if you, if you don't really have anything to look forward to, and, and like I said, coming from, from a park place, Man, I, I love Park Place. Uh, <laughs> it's changed also. I needed to get out of Park Place. Uh, I, love, I love my friends that are, that are there, but personally, I felt that I needed to get out of Park Place to truly experience the world and find myself. I love that. Love that. That's, oh, we can take that even further. Um, we're going to double back around though because I want to get to the passion. What is your passion? What would you say is your passion? Well, it's funny because uh, I, I joke with my daughters and friends and said, 
I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up, you know, mm -hmm. you know, from the Marines to driving a truck, playing basketball, running track. Uh, I didn't think I would want to act, but that became a passion. Uh, I'm working on a book, a book of poetry. Uh, oh, okay. published, so I can add that to my bucket list. Say, hey, I'm a published author also. Uh, I, I just, I don't know. And I think my motivation is when I see something and it was like, I can do that. And someone tells me that, no, you can't. It just, it just motivates me that, that much more. And, um, and I, I don't even know I want, why I want to do it sometimes. And, you know, and it's like, well, I, I'm doing this now, but who knows what I want to do a year from now, two years from now, or, you know, tomorrow, you know, so I just, I just want to, I just want to live with no regrets. I don't want to look back and say, man, I should have done that, or I should have tried that, you know, and, and of course, everyone has some type of regret in their lives. You know, what, what would have happened if I would have done this? Or I should have shot that shot or, you know, what would have happened if I would have caught that touchdown pass or, you know, what would have happened if I went to college? Who knows? Uh, but you got to be happy with where you are. But that doesn't mean, you know, settling and being content. You know, I mean, you may not be able to play uh, sports that you did when you were in high school, but there's something that you can do. I don't think I'm ready for golf yet, but. A lot of my friends are doing it. I, I don't know. I, I have to give me some time. Give me some time. Right. Maybe I get <laughs> bowling. I'll do, but I, I don't know about golf yet. Okay, bowling you'll do, but I not golf. Okay. Okay. Now I want to go back to the poetry. Yes. Where did that come from? Oh man. Well, it, it started. It started. Uh, maybe about. 20 years ago, and uh, I think yeah, I think I was going through a, uh, a breakup with a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was definitely a breakup with a girlfriend, and that's how I started expressing myself. I would write, mm -hmm. and, um, and then I I adopted a uh, you know a pen name, and I would like casually put things out in in, in public forums, and you know people were like, "Man, that's really good. Who wrote that?" I say, yeah, I don't know. I, mean, I guess he's all right. The guy who wrote it, he's all right, you know. And so that came a way that became a way that I could express myself. Uh, and I just, I, I really enjoyed it. So then it was almost like, okay, I need something, some type of emotion, whether it's anger, joy, love, so that I can write about it. You know, how do I feel in this moment right here, right now? Mm -hmm. And, and I, I enjoyed it. And so, you know, I, I've been sitting, I've been sitting on this poetry for a long, long time, you know, saying that one day I'm, I'm going to publish it. And, and now I think it's the time. I think it's time now to, uh, to be able to, to put it out there and, you know, and that's why I loved Prince as an artist, because Prince could write a, like a hundred songs and people be like, yeah, I don't really get it. Prince, like, I don't care. <laughs> I wrote it and I like it. So if nobody gets the poetry that I'm, I'm, I'm writing, that's okay. You know, if someone does get it, then that's a beautiful thing too. But I, I believe that there are people out there who feel like I feel about certain things. Absolutely. You know, and what I truly believe is that the things that we are led to share, uh, it's really not about us um, anyway. It's about what it is that we have to share, um, reaching the person that it was intended for in the first place. Uh, and I do believe that oftentimes um, those things that we are supposed to share always get out there because of the fear of what if I put this out and somebody says something or is it going to sound crazy or stupid to somebody and um, as you said mentioned about Prince just the um, you know what if somebody doesn't like it what have you he could have 
not done it. You know, he could have not published it. He could have not uh, put it out there, um, but he did. And so it's just us getting away from the fear of other people, really. It's just about other people's opinion. And that's a hard thing sometimes to move away from. So I applaud you, right? Because though you haven't done it yet, I hear it. I hear you talking about it. And so I understand that that talking will eventually move to motion. Um, and I believe you're going to do it. I believe you're going to, uh, you know, get that book out there. Yeah. So what was, what was the pen name, though? It was Malik. Malik. Okay. Interesting. What, what, why Malik? I, I just always liked it. So, you know, uh, it was Malik six foot four, which is my height. And, yeah. and ironically, even though people, a lot of people, they know my real name. Uh, a lot of my friends from back then, they'll still call me Malik. Wow. Like, you do know my name, right? It's like, oh, I know your name. Just don't like it. So, <laughs> 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 you know, it's like, okay, to each his own. Yeah, I mean, right. Growing up with that name in the projects, it was hard. But I'm, I'm going to tell you, I, I had to fight. I, well, I got beat up a lot until I learned how to fight. But uh, it, it was hard growing up in the projects with a name like Rofini, you know, uh, definitely. Uh, I, I still get I still get joked today. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Really? Today? As a as a grown? Yeah. Like a, you, usually it's, uh, you know. Grown man. Six grown foot four. Man, <laughs> four to 65. Every now, and, every now and then, one of my friend's kids, you know, they'll hit me with a little, a little, uh, pet name and everything and I just look at him like really that's what we're doing I wow like, are you four and then I start <laughs> looking them back you know it's like because hey I, I get down like that I'll joke a kid I, I don't care I'm, okay I'm, that's what we do <laughs> <laughs> you know so love that I love that wow okay so I look forward to that book being published now do you have a, a title to your book are oh, you not ready to reveal that yet I, I don't I don't want to put it out there yet because okay. it, the, the poetry is going to be there, but it's going to be so much more. Okay. And so uh, you can look at the poetry as like being that, uh, that, that, that commercial break from what else I'm talking about. Yeah. Like the little interlude. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, that's awesome. I can't wait. Okay. 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 Awesome. I'm excited. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm excited for you. Oh my gosh! I'm excited too. You know, uh, I, I like to thank all my friends who who did publish their books that, that gave me the motivation. You know, to say, "Hey, I can do that." You know, so definitely. And that is exactly what it's all about. Oh my gosh, that's what this platform is all about. Just putting um, other individuals out there, putting a spotlight on those. Uh, who have done amazing things, who are doing amazing things. And you're surprised how much talent there is out there just being wasted. Right, right. Okay, tell me, what do you, what do you mean about being wasted? <sighs> you know, I, I, I grew up, at, I, uh, I, I'm not going to say his name because I haven't talked to him, you know, about this. But we were growing up and, and this guy, he was like, the best basketball player, you know, in my neighborhood. And the thing was, he was so good that he would be out there playing with people. And then it's like, once he got tired of playing with you, he'd score. And it's like, dude, you're not even really trying. And it's like, but you're not playing on the school basketball team. And it's like, nah, I don't want to do that. So, but dude, you could go any place. You could play anywhere. You're that good. And, uh, I never understood why why he 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 never played, uh, but yeah. I I know for a fact this guy was amazing. 
And I know that there are a lot of other people who know a lot of amazing people out there who have so much talent locked inside of them. And every now and then you'll see a glimpse of that talent. Yeah. And you will realize that, man, I don't really know anything. This guy right here, he's on a whole nother level. Right. And they're just not utilizing it. They're not tapping into it. You know, to see someone with so much promise and they don't do anything with it. Yeah. So, and and I, I heard a, a, a motivational speaker speak one time and he said, picture yourself on your, your deathbed, you know, and you're surrounded by all of the opportunities, all of the things that you should have, could have done, but you didn't. Mm -hmm. And they're all looking at you angry because you limited yourself. I, I don't want to limit myself, and, and I, I encourage anyone else out there, if you feel like you want to try something, regardless of whether people are going to laugh or, or shoot you down, you do you. You do. If it makes you happy, you do you. And let people do them. You know, right. don't live in regret. So, yeah. so that, yeah. that's the thing right there. I, I, I hate to see people waste talent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sometimes they don't know they have talent so if you yeah. say who's talented hey, definitely reach out there and say brother you're talented and, and yeah. that's the thing with our black community brothers don't want to praise other but well we don't like to praise other black people sometimes unless yeah. there's something in it for us um, you know, support support your brothers, support your sisters, support their grind I'm supporting one of my sisters right now. This is her shirt. And, you know, I respect that hustle. I mm. respect that hustle. I support black businesses. My only thing with black businesses is give me the same quality that mm. you give someone else who doesn't look like me. If I'm, if I'm coming out there and I'm supporting you, give me the best service that you can give me. You should give everybody who's coming in to support you amazing service but i don't want to go into an establishment and people act like i'm bothering i'm like hey I'm, I'm here to support you and you're like oh well we don't really want your support and not that's it's not that that's what they're saying but it's their actions service right like like you know customer service is very important i don't, I don't care if i spend a dollar you know make me feel like that dollar is important right because I may go out and tell a friend, use yes. our social platform and be like, hey, this place right here, greatest food in the world, but customer service, don't even, I wouldn't go there. Right. Word of mouth, to, especially today in our, in, in our day and age, everybody is using a platform. Everyone can go on <laughs> and start a, start a live. Right. Either praise you or tear you down. Yes. You know, so, you know, be cognizant of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, getting back to wasted talent um, and those individuals who we sometimes see as doing that. I would say a lot of that, uh, yes, that portion of um, them not knowing that they have talent. Um, but then it goes back to the fear, fear of, um, what if it fails? What if I fail? What if I'm rejected? Um, or what if I just cannot continue with this great, you know, I'm on, I'm on a good roll, you know, what if I can't keep that going? Um, but it's all the, you know, the what ifs and the junk stuff that goes on in our minds that keeps us from pursuing our dream, pursuing goals, pursuing our passion. Mm -hmm. And I think if we could recognize first, and I, I would say oftentimes we don't recognize that it's the fear that's speaking. Um, we are just so focused on the talk that's going on in our mind. Mm -hmm. um, that negative talk that's keeping us from what it is that we want to do. 
and not recognizing, you know what, that it is fear. And then stopping um, to ask or to trace the trigger. Like, why am I fearful of it? What is it that is um, that has created this emotion of, um, of fear? Um, and I don't think we're intentional enough. <laughs> and I'm trying to be careful with my words. I don't think we're intentional um, or we do enough intentional work to get past all the, the lies that our mind tell us. Um, and I believe that if once we start doing that, that's when you'll see the breakthroughs. You know, a person can come up with a million excuses why not to try something. Mm -hmm. but they only need one reason to try it. Yeah. Because I want to. Right. You know, I, I, I sit there and I hear people, no matter, you know, everyone has hard times from at some point in time or another in their life. Mm -hmm. But it's, what are you going to do about it? You know, uh, <laughs> perfect example of, uh, was nominated for uh, an Emmy that uh, we went to the award show this past weekend. And uh, we didn't win. And, and uh, a, a young lady that I do not know, I didn't even know I was being watched because mm -hmm. once we, once we, once it was announced that we didn't win or they, they announced the people who did win, I sat there and, and I clapped and I watched the stage. Every person that went up there to, to pick up an Emmy, I watched them. And someone's like, oh, you look like you were heartbroken. I was like, I wasn't heartbroken. I was preparing myself that, hey, I didn't win now, but now I want to win it. I want to win it more than anything else right this minute. And when I get up from this table and I leave this event, I'm going to start working on how to get up on that stage. Mm -hmm. So that was the drive in me. So it, it was like them telling me like, nope, you can't do it. By, by them not <laughs> calling our name, it, it made me feel like you're saying that I can't do it, that I'm not worthy. And I know that I am if I'm willing to put in the hard work, time, and dedication. And that's where I'm at right now. I, I am so dialed in, so focused, and um, I'm gonna be up there. Mark my words, I'm gonna be up there. And once I get up there and I get it, <laughs> if I decide to keep on, I don't know. Because it's like, well, I've already done this. What else is there? I'll tell you what I'm not going to do. I'm not going swimming with sharks or climbing, <laughs> climbing any mountains. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave that to other people. I'll, I'll find right. So I want to, I, I heard you say that, you know, as you sat there and watched all the other individuals who won, um, and what was going on in your mind, what, what took you to that place of, push um to like make that switch in your brain in your mind that because you could have either gone you, you could have gone either way right it could have been a crush and you just sat in it and it just continued to you know escalate to the point where you said you know what I tried it I'm done I don't want to do this anymore um, but you did it. So what was the, the deciding factor for you? Or what's that thing inside of you that just clicked to the positive instead of the negative? You know, I, I can't say that I wasn't, I wasn't crushed. My, my spirit wasn't crushed for that second. But when I hit rock bottom, I was facing up. Mm. And, and look up, I can get up. And so, and that's why I continue to watch. I'm not going to let other people see me hold my head down and look defeated, you mm -hmm. know? Because I'd be like, oh, they didn't win. And so, 
you can see a person's body language. Uh, there, there's a very great basketball player out there right now. And I would tell people, I was like, look at his body language. When they're winning, he's happy, go lucky, he's smiling, they're dancing. But when they're losing, his body language just screams defeat. The game's not over yet. Right, right. The body is already in defeat. Mm. Let people see you in defeat. I don't care if it's one second left on the clock. How many games have been won with a, a, a last second shot or, or throw or goal something? Don't don't give up. Don't I don't give you losing by 100 points. Hold your head up. Hold your head up and everything. I'm still walking off here, off this court, this field with my head up. And that's how I felt that night. And I was proud. I, I was proud to even get there, to be there, to be even at the table, because there's so many people who don't make it there. Absolutely. So just because I wasn't recognized tonight, I'm not going to rain on anybody else's parade. Hey, you worked hard. I worked hard. You were recognized. Fine. What do I have to do now to get even better? Because no matter how good I think I am, it's always room for improvement. And so, and, right. I, and I think that's the biggest thing is knowing that there's always room for improvement. Even Michael Jordan, practice, right. Kobe Bryant, practice. Right. And, and they were already great. Yeah. So that's what clicked to me. It's like, all right, game on. You know, it was definitely game on. And and who knows? Maybe, maybe I'll never get back there. But game is on. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try my best. I'm gonna give it my best. And I'm not gonna let them see me defeated because it's a victory for me even being out from Norfolk. <laughs> I mean, I don't know anybody from Norfolk that was like, hey man, when I grew up, I'm gonna go win an Emmy or be nominated for an Emmy or be in a commercial or on TV, anything like that. Yeah. It was totally unexpected. Mm. Mm. So it's definitely a blessing. So everything that I do in this business from this point forward is a blessing and it's a step further than I was the day before. I like that. I like that a step forward in where you were before. Mm, that's good. Okay, so we're going to uh, take that same energy, right? That same thought process about um, how do I want to say this? The same thought process concerning relationships, mm -hmm. right? Um, I would say that there are um, many individuals or many couples. Um, no, let's let's look at the individual person who are afraid, first of all, to be their true self. Um, to afraid to show um, even that fear, right? So you having that conversation with that person who said, you know, you look like you were defeated or you look like, you know, you were down and out, whatever, when um, those individuals were receiving their awards, but yet you shared with her, um, you know, something more. You shared more of your, how you were truly feeling uh, in that moment. Um, I would say oftentimes in relationships, we don't do that. Whether it's, it doesn't have to be, you know, husband, wife, or girlfriend, or whatever. It could be just in that moment, you know, you shared with um, another person. Um, and especially a female, you know, you could have been trying to be all. <laughs> I ain't let that get to me, you know. You know, you know how pride gets in the way. Um what would you say in reference to individuals being open and honest about 
themselves um, open and honest about where they are mentally, um, emotionally, um, even how they're feeling in the relationship. Wow. How, how I got here, I do not know, but I, I, I'm feeling like it was perfect. So we, we're going we're gonna to continue in this. We're going to go there. Little you know, I, I, you know I, I'm not a therapist in any way, form, or fashion. I, I've, I'm just speaking from personal experience. Uh, I think that each and every one of us has something, some type of trauma at some point in time in our life that we're dealing with. Something that we may not be exactly uh, excited or happy about that still affects us to this very day, whether we know it or not. Right. And I, I think it's important to to be honest with yourself and, and to be able to be honest with someone that you truly trust who will allow you to be honest. And the most important thing I think in a situation like that is if you open yourself up to someone for that person not to weaponize what you've told them, what you've shared with them, and then to use it against you, you know, in a, in a disagreement or a fight or to go out and tell someone else, because trust is so very important. You brought up relationships. Trust is definitely the number one thing in a relationship to me. I need to trust the person that I'm with. I need to be able to be who I am with the person I'm in a relationship with, whether it's girlfriend, wife, you know, because if it's not there, then it's just sex. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. you know, but if you are truly in tune with the person that you're with, you want to be able to share with them. Because when you go out in these streets, you go into your job, you put on a mask, whether people want to admit it or not, you can't be your true self when you leave your house. When you walk into your job, there's a certain way that you have to walk, a certain way you have to talk, a certain way you have to act. There's sometimes where someone will make you upset, and in your mind, you're like, mm, but you have to say the politically correct thing uh, in that society today. And then when you come home, you want to be able to unpack all of that. And it should be in a place of trust. This, this, this is my house. This is my kingdom. And if I can't be open and honest in my own house, with the person that I'm allowing to share my space with, mm -hmm. why, why do I even have you there? Okay. You know, so it, it's important to be able to be honest and, and, and you have to be honest with yourself first. Okay. Yes. Like that, start. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You have to be honest with yourself first, you know, and there's nothing wrong with, with sitting down and talking to someone who is qualified, <laughs> you know, because you got to be careful who, 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 you, who you seek out for advice. Right. You know? So, you know, you got, we all got that friend that we like, we right. all know they're going to give us bad advice, no right. matter what, what it's about. You know, man, I just, I just, you know, what should I do? You know, it's going to be wrong. You uh -huh. know, it, it definitely has to be someone who, you can be open with who is going, who's trained or, or qualified to be able to say, let's dig a little deeper. I, I, mm -hmm. I don't think it is, but I, I see something else. I feel something else. Let's try to get to the root cause of why. Mm -hmm. You know, why are you so driven? You know, why do the, the, the certain words put you on the defensive? Why do you look at women a certain way? Why do you look at men a certain way? Just the why. Right. And sometimes if we ask ourselves why, we really don't know. We think we know, but we, we really don't. And then once we find out, it's like, wow. Right. You know, I never knew that something so small, or it seemed so small and insignificant at the time, is still affecting me to this very day. Yeah. You know, so it's, you, you got to be able to trust. And, and if you, if you can't find, if you don't have a friend that you can truly sit down with and, 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 and talk to them openly, you know, then you should probably reevaluate your friends 
and you may go through a, a, your life and only have maybe one or two true friends. Pretty much everyone else is their associates. Right. Be careful with that because not everyone that smiles and, and, and carries the label friend, you know, is, is truly your friend. And that bothers me about social media, Facebook. You know, everyone wants to friend you, friend you. They need to have an associate button, you know, because not everybody, I was like, there's like 5,000 people on my friends list. And I'm like, I, I maybe speak to maybe right. four, six, you know, on a regular basis. And in a year, I may speak to maybe 30. And most of that time, I'm like, hey, it's my birthday or it's Father's Day. And they, you know, wish you a happy birthday or Father's Day. Those other people, it's like, I don't, I don't know, know you. <laughs> I really don't know you. He's like, hey, you're friends with such and such. He's like, I don't even know them. Right, right. <laughs> I don't even think we've ever had a conversation. You know, he's like, hey, how you doing? I just want to introduce myself because you've been on my friends list for about three years now. And we've right. So, right. you know. Kind of like how we met. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I, I loved your energy. Because it was like in, in today's society, you're going out hugging people. And it was like, oh, she's hugging people. <laughs> you don't touch people. You're like, come here, come here. Come, come, I, I want to hug you. you know, I don't think it will work with me because of, of like 6'4", 265. And so people, they, they probably called the police on me. Like, I felt intimidated. He just no. came here, come to me. I'm going to hug you. <laughs> <laughs> so it works with you. It works with you. I don't think it'll work. With you. Oh my goodness. Well, you know, it didn't always work. It didn't, no, not with everybody. Not everybody wants um, a hug. Not what everybody wants the embrace. Um, and it's interesting that this part comes up, right? Because uh, there was a point in my life where I actually stopped hugging because I went to do what I always do, right? It's like, oh, hey, how you doing? Um, and then I got so much resistance, you know, from individuals. And I took that as a rejection um, towards me, right? I took it personally. And it wasn't until um, probably months later where I realized that it wasn't about me and it wasn't about me realizing God had to show me that that pushback is not about you. It's about what is going on inside of them. Mm -hmm. And that conversation with him helped me to understand that we all are dealing with something. I think sometimes we just kind of look at our own um, life and situations and issues and think that we're the only ones that's going through um, something. But I had to realize that there are individuals who had not um, embraced that the question of why, right? So to, to get to a place of whatever that hurt was that caused them to want to reject love, that caused them to want to reject um, and embrace, you know, from another person um, so much, right? I mean, even to understand that sometimes people have gone through some traumatic things mm -hmm. dealing with other individuals who may have touched them inappropriately or whatever. And so um, it was so much I had to learn. And on that journey of trying to trace um, triggers or, or understanding um, myself or other individuals, it helped me to that journey helped me to really get intentional about my own um, awareness. Mm -hmm. Like who am I and why was I created? And what is it that caused me to 
first of all, I want to back up. Where did that rejection, that feeling of rejection come from? Just because someone didn't want to hug, you know, they had their personal reasons, but um, I think that question of why is, is so very important um, for our journey of growth, of self-discovery, of healing, um, healing of those, those past traumas, and even of like what our purpose is. And why were we created? Um, I, my, my son and probably my daughter, those in close to me would probably say, you're always asking questions, you know, <laughs> like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. But asking questions are really, I mean, they lead to answers. Um, and I would have to say, I wasn't always comfortable with asking questions because I don't want, Anybody know I didn't know, 